got you. <laughs> Yay! Hey, cool cat. Well, you know I love to help you all the time. Get over, give me a hug. Oh no! So you see, Doc, I think it'd just be best for everyone if we put him down. I see. You've neglected to mention what breed he is. Uh, I think he's from Nevada. He's definitely a pussy, though. Hey, have a look at him. Yeah, sure. He's out in my trunk. You keep your cat in your trunk? Mm, mm, mm. Oh my god! So how do you want to do this? You want me to hold him still, or...? Is that a person? What? No, no, don't be ridiculous. He's Cool Cat. Cool is in his name? Well, I mean, technically he told me Cool is his middle name, but he's got a bunch of different people's wallets on him, so your guess is as good as mine. Tried taking off the mask. That thing is either sewn to his skin or hot glued like pizza in a furry's hotel room. Is this just a homeless meth head you put in a costume? No way, he's totally a cat. And he's in a lot of pain. What did you say happened to him? <laughs> a lot of things. <clears throat> uh, but, but the last thing that happened was he got hit by a truck. And the urine smell is... I peed on him. What? I thought it would keep him from getting infected. I, I don't know. Isn't that how it works? Look, you're a vet. You do this kind of thing all the time. It's a it's a kindness. He's sick. I thought it was hit by a truck. He got sick and got hit by a truck. And then urine. Mm -hmm. So let me see if I have this right. You expect me to not only euthanize what is clearly a grown man in a costume, but you thought I would view this as some sort of merciful act? There you go. Yay! Only one more. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I see. And you've already paid the receptionist? Yes, sir. All right, I'll get the syringe. What can be said about Derek Savage? Well, a lot of things, actually. He's a balanced man who advocates self-expression. If that troll punk ever does anything Cool Cat related again, then I can legally have his entire YouTube channel deleted. He hates bullies. You got treated like a little punk bitch. And you're a scumbag. He's never done or said anything controversial. Uh, one of the weirdest things he said was uh, uh, the girl, what's her name, uh, uh, Jessica Salazar, who plays Maria, he was saying, like, you know, I can't use her anymore because, you know, she's got no, you know, she has, he said, tits now. But I think his most defining character trait is charismatic energy that draws you right in. You know, I'm trying to talk to lady folk because I love lady folk. Hey, you know, no matter what that. So for any parents watching, I feel you should know, the man who created this children's entertainment that makes fun and balloon men look like the fucking Wiggles has a criminal record, posed in underwear for Playgirl, falsely took down YouTube videos about his film and harassed critics, threatening to sue them for their videos if he didn't get public apologies, while in the same breath inventing fake legal firms and impersonating lawyers to seem credible, made a now-deleted video for his channel which spread misinformation about copyright law, allegedly replaced the woman voicing his furry waifu, Mama Cat, for rejecting his romantic advances, and raised money through Indiegogo for a tone-deaf school shooting PSA, then basically stole the donations and continues teasing its release for clout to this day, while hopelessly seeking investors and wasting everyone's money on other projects that nobody asked for. So, yeah. Oh, it's fair use! That's when, that's you don't want to be like this. Well, let's take a look at Cool Cat vs. Dirty Dog, The Virus Wars, his most recent release, because I don't know, I fucking hate myself. Let's just get this out of the way now. Derek Savage is the most eco-friendly director in Hollywood, as he recycles his own movies multiple times. The man reuses more footage than Hanna-Barbera and made me pay for the same movie twice! He just sold his 17-minute coronavirus short I reviewed previously, but added all this extra crap onto the ass end. Unlike a Latina in spandex, however, this fluffed-up rear end isn't edible and it's got no bounce and it's about as real as Kim Kardashian's. Speaking of edibles, you might want to grab one while I recap the last movie, Ku Klux and the virus that should have wiped him out. Dirty Dog dislikes children and loves the coronavirus, making him the opposite of Cool Cat and Joe Biden in every way. Oh no! He also throws like a little bitch. You got treated like a little punk bitch. This makes Dirty Dog so mad that he tortures us with his music. Cool Cunt does the same. Derek Savage has the range and vocal ability of someone who thinks installing CO2 detectors is a waste of time. Dirty Dog uses an evil witch doctor's magic potion to create one-third of a science fair project, which he chucks at the kids. Unfortunately for him, OK at best cat punches this deadly particle into a zillion smaller ones, likely dooming anyone who breathed them in. Or not, I guess, as Dirty Dog laments his defeat and decides to loudly threaten to shoot up Cool Cat's school, which should have been their first cue to call the police and warn classmates, but instead they let this raving lunatic just stand there as per usual. And since this movie isn't called Cool Cat Becomes a Statistic, 
I'm guessing that Derek has shot as much of that movie he promised as Dirty Dog has shot classrooms. I got something for Cool Cat and his ugly friends. I'll get them at their school, and I'll get them good. It's time for Dirty Dog to rule the world! How? Derek, not that I'm thrilled with the idea of you teaching kids, well, anything, but considering your Indiegogo scams were used to fund this, it's extra scummy that you changed the ending of the last movie just to justify this one existing. So instead of shooting up a school, because I guess how can you shoot up a place you aren't allowed within 100 feet of, Dirty Dog just sort of wanders away from Cool Cat looking for unsupervised children. And where are the kids? I can't find any dumb kids to pick on! Do you have zero object permanence, you fucking dipshit? You walked away from them! They're probably right back where you left them in stunned silence! Dirty Dick gets a breaking news alert and finds out that the pandemic has officially ended since the last movie, which upsets him because he's so poorly written and two-dimensionally evil that he can throw water balloons at children one second, then go home and whack off to the Jim Jones suicide tapes, and it would all feel totally in character. Butch the Bully's villain arc now feels like the 2019 Joker movie in comparison. This news upsets Dollar Store Dog, whose logical conclusion is he's gonna make his own virus with blackjack and hookers. Meanwhile, at the local one-bedroom apartment of Daddy Divorced Derek, Cool Cat is gaming on his daddy's crusty bed sheets. And I'm gonna jump over you, shirt! Jump, jump, jump! Ha ha ha! I just got you, shirt! Comes the hat! I just jumped over you, Ed! Wow! I didn't edit this. It's really in the movie. Derek probably thinks that kids still enjoy pushing hoops with sticks. No, 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 sorry, sorry, that's still too entertaining. Derek's idea of a good time for kids is quietly reading a coloring book and facing the corner. I know it's just a product placement, but if this is the kind of terrible Flash game Derek would actually play, we need to keep him away from Pong. He'd paint his trousers brown. Hey, cool cat. Are you ready to go to the house? I sure am, Daddy Derek. There you go. I love how they have to reuse footage from the very first Cool Cat since Daddy eats ramen noodles off a paper plate Derek can't afford to live there anymore. If he ever really did. So Cool Cat and his dad head to a house that I guess Derek must have bought for a quick flip in real life because this whole section is just giving vague advice on buying property in a movie targeted at really little kids. You're boring! You're fucking boring! And I feel more attachment to this disposable fork than I do to you! This is just a waste of time! They're just looking at a dumb, ugly house! <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's how everyone watching feels, but Derek, you're not supposed to say the quiet part out loud! Speaking of him, we follow Dirty Dog back to his literal evil lair in the desert, where he's engineering a chemical weapon. No, really. Remember when he said he'd make his own virus? Well, no shit, that's exactly what he does. He mixes cartoonishly large bottles of Agent Orange-flavored Kool-Aid and Pirate Flag Poison like he's in an old Tom and Jerry cartoon. And this all somehow produces a new virus. You could literally get a position anywhere with skills that advanced, and you choose to bully kids and live in a tent with your kidnapped gay lover. Oh, yeah, should probably mention him. There's also this nameless slave beaver in the movie. I want you to just guess. No, really, just guess who voices him. Oh, no! What are you doing? No. I'm making no, no, the no, dirty no, dog no, no. virus. Wait, 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 wait. But why do you want to do wait, that? Wait, 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 wait. And I'm going to affect all the kids. Why do you want to do that, dirty dog? Because I'm a bully. That's why. Yeah, that Osama Bin Laden guy, what a mischievous little prankster he was. And the Taliban? They got a little naughty sometimes. Real fucking rascals, huh? My dude, you aren't a bully. Bullies steal lunch money or egg houses, call people names. This is a little bit higher on the evil tier list than pushing a kid off a swing set. I don't think detention is going to be punishment enough for attempted genocide. Butch the bully bringing a gun to school in the last movie? That's pussy shit. This movie has got a one-man furry Al-Qaeda. Domestic terrorism dog may have created a virus with no lab or understanding of chemistry at all, but that comes at a great cost because this new virus is a very peculiar weakness. I'm so happy I could cut a fart! <laughs> it has such a great aroma! My fart is killing my viruses! Well, we did it, folks. We got footage of Derek Savage literally smelling his own farts. Guess we can add this to the list of fetishes Derek is using his films to explore. Back to the misadventures of Cool Cunt and Daddy Dickhead. Yeah! I like the way that it looks, too. It's framed real nice. Just like a boogie woogie house! <laughs> what the hell is a boogie woogie house? What is this schizophrenic nonsense that Derek Savage will just exposit? Seriously, though, during this whole section, they don't do anything. Except walk around and look through the windows of a house they don't own yet. So, I guess Derek didn't put any lessons about Castle Doctrine in his gun safety video, did he? 
If it's not your house yet, you shouldn't be on the property without calling ahead. Best get to stepping, son. Alakablam! Or at least make your presence known, my man. Jesus! What if it's some kid or young woman home alone waiting for her husband to come home? Even if it's empty, you never know who's inside the house. Shit can happen, man. You gotta be careful. Wow, this door's unlocked. So you wanna go check it out? Let's do it! Okay! Alakablam! This whole house flipping segment, including when they come back later to finish selling it to a buyer, is about 13 minutes total. Sorry, but I can't imagine selling a movie that's so full of crappy filler it's practically vegan. Imagine paying for a cheeseburger from a local restaurant and being served a half-eaten, reheated Big Mac. Why don't we go in and take a look in here and see what's in the back? I'm a boogie-woogie cat! Derek Savage is spitting on my Big Mac while I'm eating it. Why don't we go inside and call the real estate agent? Would you like to make an offer for it? Yes, I would! Really? Watch me and learn! Yes, because just like making a movie, anytime Cool Cat is involved with a project, it always works out. Right, Derek? They decide to make an offer and call Sammy, their realtor. Oh, Sammy, hey, it's Derek. We're over here at the house right now, and man, you were right. Cool Cat absolutely loves this place. Wait, Derek, are you at the house right now? It's not for sale, Derek. And, and I told you to stop calling my home phone. How did you even get this number? What? Look, I, I'm sorry. I, I told you we, we've never heard of the Bank of Cool Cat, and we cannot exchange houses for shares in. What did you say here? Dirty Doge Coin? What is that? Hey, I appreciate that. I'll talk to you in a few, man. Oh my God, Derek! Please, no. I'm sorry. Don't come to my house. Well, other than this shot from the POV of Sammy the Realtor and his family tied up in the back seat, the story then chooses to focus on a breaking news broadcast about a virus spreading throughout the city. Dirty Dog also hears this and all but rubs his nipples, excited by his own evil. Yes! Yes! They're talking about a virus! A virus! You want another take there, Derek? Or maybe have a seat and let a real actor, you know, act? Oh, no! Despite the new virus going around, the fact it was sundown earlier, and that I so badly want him not to, Cool Cat stands in front of a green screen like in the shitty last movie, and sings an out-of-tune, off-time, no-good, very bad song. Stab the button, and we'll make history. It'll be a cool picture of you and me. Pictures of fun, and stand beside me. Join the party, we're happy. Why? Why does he have to do it? Hire someone else. Fiverr has tons of people willing to work for peanuts and praise. Just take your pick, you talentless egomaniac. Picture, picture, picture. Absolutely no way I'm getting through that. But watch this. I hate this. I hate this. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Why can't this movie just stop being? I'm so tired. I'm watching my passions, my love for music and cinema, both being brutally sodomized for three and a half minutes, with tears and Daddy Derek's generous pre-cum being the only lube available. At least Tommy Wiseau hired talented people and got an expensive camera to shoot a real movie. You don't even use a fucking DSLR. These aren't movies. They're compilations of the world's ugliest midlife crisis and divorce. Wait, no, I take that back, because the biggest mindfuck is yet to come. That's not how you cut... anything. Also, Mama Cat is back? They must have reconciled. Or more likely, Daddy Derek threatened to cut off Cool Cat's opioids and watch him go through withdrawal if she didn't come back, but... either way. Thanks! I love teamwork. Well, hey, I tell you what, Mama, anything you love, so do I. Oh, you're so sweet to me. No, Tell me, how could I not be, Mama? you the finest cat in town! Hey, look, if he can recycle his shitty movies, I can use the same joke twice, okay? He's not even deserving of fully original content. Wait! Oh. Mm, mm. I can hear my parents! I better go say hi! <laughs> Might want to give him a minute, Cool Cat. Well, maybe less than a minute. You know what? Actually, never mind. They'll be done and have the counter cleaned off by the time you get there. Shit, dinner might be ready. Hey, did you hear a Cool Cat singing? Derek, the next-door neighbors came knocking to see if you were beating me again. And you're asking me if I fucking heard it. And something else funny is violence against women. Okay, no joke though. You think he was creepy with Mama Cat before? Well, get ready to fucking leave the video with this one. We'll call you when it's ready. Bye bye. Tell you what, why don't you come over here and give me a kiss, you foxy looking kitty cat, you? <laughs> So, thoroughly traumatized, we follow Cool Cat to his bedroom, where Dollar Tree Obama's footage is reused from earlier by cutting off the screen while he talks. This informs Cool Cat that Dirty Dog is behind the new virus. 
How did the reporters find out? Oh, that's so cute. You think you're going to get an answer. Instead of informing the government that he knows who Dirty Dog is, or where this terrorist harming people is most likely to be located, or giving them any information of any kind, Cool Cat decides that he is the best candidate to track down and stop a literal enemy of the nation. Because that's what Derek wants to teach kids. Vigilante justice. But first, he says he needs something big. I have to stop Dirty Dog and his virus, but I need something big! Hey, real talk, I'm really glad you finally came out of the closet, Cool Cat. It's okay, it's okay, most furries are gay, we understand. The Dirty Dog virus is spreading and I have to stop it! And I need the Harrier Jet! What? Oh, wow, that's a great idea. And I'm sure the Colonel would love to help you with this mission. Colonel? But, like, KFC's the Colonel? What the fuck is happening right now? Yeah, so for some reason, Derek includes this guy and his civilian-owned Harrier jet in the movie, and it's on the cover like this was a selling point. So I can only assume he's in it because Derek knew this pile of cat crap and dog vomit was so ungodly boring that even a paraplegic kid would walk out of the room. I know we're meant to believe that they just know this guy, but let me make this perfectly clear. If a grown man in a fursuit pretending to be someone else's child claims he needs to use your private jet to defeat some supervillain who created a virus in his backyard, what you're supposed to do is hang up the phone and contact the people with the keys to his new padded room. You don't say yes! The colonel is going to help! Hey, this is fantastic. And you know what? I gotta go show the house to a buyer. Would you like to come? I am so sick of this stupid house plot. It's just Derek filming Cool Cat bouncing around like a fucking ADHD child in a house he or his friend was flipping at the time. It adds nothing! So if it's okay with you, we're gonna skip them selling the house. All that it amounts to is an awkward, preachy PSA. Yeah, like a let's wrap it all up for them moment, but before the movie's even over, so. Guys, I tell you what, let me share this experience with you. Teach your kids some business cause it'll help them for the rest of their life. Okay, that's not actually the worst advice. I'm a firm believer that teaching kids at a young age about home maintenance is actually important, but it's clearly just tacked on to justify this film being called educational. Because we didn't learn anything in all 13 minutes of this subplot unless you count how fucking patient we are. And now we're home. I'm glad to be home. I have to stop Dirty Dog or his virus could kill all the kids. Holy shit, it actually is deadly? And, and you're telling me that you know it's deadly? Like Dirty Dog is a confirmed kid killer? Or at least attempted murderer. And you're standing around selling houses with Daddy Derek? Time is a factor, cruel cat. And with every awkward run in place, stupid song, or boogie woogie, a kid could be dying and it is your fault. I thought you wanted to save the kids, you fucking useless cunt. Get your ass moving. But he can't yet, because cool cat doesn't know if he'll be able to find Dirty Dog, which, I mean, he's traveling on foot with no car and bullies the same kids every day. Kind of figured he'd be easy to find. He's probably local, but okay. So Derek, I shit you not, he gives Cool Cat a magical artifact. One that was passed down to him from his grandpa cat. What is it? Something that your granddaddy cat left you, Cool Cat. And here it is, Cool Cat. Good golly! It's grandpappy's service weapon. <laughs> nah, just fucking with you. It ends up being girly jewelry that Derek pilfered from a local pawn shop, and so it ends up making Cool Cat look even more like special, super unique, closed species OC, don't steal, please. I'm gonna put it on you real quick. And it's not a toy, Cool Cat, so take this very seriously right here. It'll give you powers that you've never had before. I like to imagine he doesn't tell these actors what he's gonna do before he does it to them, and then just says stuff like this and they have to roll with it. I want to put it on you real quick. Well, dripped out in the latest fashion from the Chuck E. Cheese prize counter, Cool Cat heads outside to find Dirty Dog. That is, till his phone goes off, and he decides right now is the best time to check his fur affinity notifications. You know, when people are dying. Specifically kids. Cool Cat, please, you have to save us! Please, Cool Cat, save us from the Dirty Dog virus! My god, was this the reward tier? Like, to be in the movie? Your reward was to be shittily overlaid onto a 20 kilobyte JPEG of Cool Cat holding a phone? I just hope the extortionate amount of money he charged you was worth it. Shit, might as well own it. Add it to your resume. Fuck that, just throw your resume out. Show up in a bathrobe and Crocs and throw this scene on a USB stick at the HR lady. Impressive. Guaranteed you'll get a callback and your dick will be sucked. So we return to Dirty Dog, who is apparently not in hiding, but literally out in the open where anyone could have pinged his phone and hunted him like a, well, well an animal. Yes, yes, I like this location. Yes, the perfect location. An empty field, far from any kind of people or permits. And this deserves a song! No, no it doesn't. Stop it. Stop! I mean it! I'll scream! Rape! Rape! Ear rape! I'm Dirty Dog! And I'm the baddest dog there is! Dirty, dirty, dirty dog! I'm smarter than you! 
Do I need to tell you what's wrong with this? No, do I really need to? From the first second with the out-of-tune palm-muted guitar, programmed drums that are off-time, to the worst vocal performance yet in the movie, it feels like Derek Savage could have actually made this whole song himself, with no producers or any help. And when even the music starts to sound like how Daddy Derek talks... There wasn't really anything out there that told children about going green and being nice to the environment. The big Lewinsky. Yeah, you know what? Um, on second thought, I think I am ready for a dirty dog to wipe out humanity. We had a good run, time to hit the reset button. Look how long we made it before a cool cat or a Derek Savage happened. That's something to be proud of. But just as he's about to release more of the virus, Cool Cat orders a fucking napalm strike where he and Dirty Dog are standing. Right near a residential area, I might add. No, this is not a joke. Watch. Roger that, Major Cool Cat. Napalm is being released. So I guess Cool Cat takes after his great-grandpappy and likes to commit war crimes. This does, shockingly, very little to affect Dirty Dog. It doesn't even distract him. It's like, oh wow, that burned my butt, and then Cool Cat steps out to face him. Better hope that magic item gives you Super Saiyan Blue or else you're fucked. How is he this resilient? And what was the jet even for if apparently he can survive napalm strikes? All you did was tickle his asshole and put innocent people nearby at risk. So Cool Cat and Dirty Dog finally throw down, after Cool Cat just lightly knocks the bottle onto the ground. Pretty sure that's still releasing stuff, so that was pointless. And this fight scene, from its choreography to its acting, is as badass and perfectly balanced as you think it is. How's the dirt taste, dirty dog? And now's your time to die! <sighs> yeah. Fucking Cool Cat's making Fight Club look like a pussy's film. Wanna make a red pill workout video? Fuck Patrick Bateman, fuck Fight Club, fuck Taxi Driver, Cool Cat. Shit, maybe Cool Cat should be cast in action movies. I'm gonna fuck you. So Dirty Dog says it doesn't matter how much of a little bitch he is or how tiny his peepee -pee is, because his virus was already released. But Cool Cat reveals to Dirty Dog that he knows the secret weakness of his virus is farts. How? Because Derek was tired and couldn't think of how to end the movie. So the viruses all die and the kids are safe. You know, except the ones that were already infected before, but... Eh, fuck it, Cool Cat didn't know those ones. Then, like a true hero, Cool Cat lets this murderous and violent terrorist with superhuman durability just walk off to likely go prey on more children, maybe even perfect and release more viruses. I'm gonna get you! I'm gonna get you at your school! The bullets will be flying at your school! Because remember, the only people who deserve to be arrested are internet critics who don't like Cool Cat. That is law. Oh, and that beaver from before comes back, just to say, hi. My name is Beaver, and thanks for saving the world from Dirty Dog! Bye-bye for now! Absolutely pointless. Then Cool Cat wanders off into the desert like fucking Bigfoot, and we finally reach the credits. Look! The problem is over! And that was Cool Cat vs. Dirty Dog, the war in my attention span, and having said that, I'm finished with Derek Savage. Forever. The reality is, guys, we know his stuff isn't going to be any good, so there's no reason to even talk about it. Maybe if he ever makes the school shooter movie, we can watch that. But as he continues to piss away other people's money, waste our time with boring or unnecessary stories, tweet stupid shit, and treat us like idiots, then I have no desire to continue promoting him by ripping his movies apart. And I don't need to! You can see his name on stuff, watch the trailers, and just know not to buy it. So I didn't even prevent anyone from seeing it anyway. That's why I think we can finally bury this dead horse I've been kicking. This movie is quite possibly enough evidence to have Derek Savage committed. Or audited. I don't know which needs to happen first, but everything. From the story, to the characters, to the production value overall. It's just bad. Yes, worse than Kid's superhero. At least that one had an overarching narrative. Consistent characters. Maria would at least show up more than once. These two didn't even show up after the first 17 minutes. And most of its lessons revolved around small but relatable issues for kids, like bullying. At its most extreme, a kid getting a hold of a gun. It was all about the kids. But this one tries to teach us to avoid mass extinction and flip houses. And I guess that we should use magical necklaces to enact vigilante justice and beat up an indestructible supervillain nemesis in the desert? I don't know. It's the best I can come up with. How is this educational? This shit is the most brain-dead, unfocused waste of time I've ever had the displeasure of losing feeling in my ass to while sitting down to watch. It's not so bad it's good like the last one was. It's not even bad with good intentions, beyond maybe the wash your hands crap. It's just bad. Poorly shot, poorly edited, badly acted. Just stay away. 
You know what? If you create art, music, anything, do better. Accept and be glad criticism comes, fair or not. Learn to tell the difference between bad criticism and good criticism, and try to handle the pressure of putting yourself out there, because you will grow into amazing things. Don't be a Derek Savage, though. Don't take people's money for completely unacceptable, low-quality products, and music so bad that my doctor busts out a rape kit for my fucking eardrums. 2024 is at a rough start, because my New Year's resolution included me not drinking so much. Well, there's always next year. Be cool, guys. And fuck you, Derek. Touch my review, and I'll do to you what your music's done to my ears, you fuck-witted half-chub. Are you guys on drugs? Very much. Yes, an incredible amount. Yes. I see the mirror and doubt you. I can't feel my face. Break down to midnight over what I cannot change. I'm all over the place and I can't seem to fake it Here's suicide, the answer to the pain I feel inside Anorexia, so army can't hurt you your body Depression, self-perception We can't change reality But we Can't be free